My name is Monica Charrington in Mr. West's advanced drafting class, and this is my semester one house model project. So Revit is a BIM software, and BIM stands for Building Information Modeling, and it allows for architects, engineers, contractors, and even designer professionals to create unified models. These models include real-life information and utilize intelligent 3D model-based design tools to maximize productivity and workflow. Revit also speeds up projects from design to finished product while allowing updates and design changes to the model. On the following slides, I will explain how I use the software to create my own model house. So the engineering design process. Um, to tackle this project, I first set up a step-by-step -step plan called the engineering design process. And this essentially defined the problem, um, generates concepts, develop the solution, constructs and tests the prototype, and finally, we evaluate the solution. In defining the problem, I proved the problem valid by explaining the materials that I would use to construct a house from a floor plan and use the skills I had applied in working with previous projects in architecture. And I then generated concepts on how the house was going to look and what type of material I would use for landscape. So to create the first floor in Revit, I took a picture of the floor, floor plan and brought it into Revit as an image file, which I then scaled down to the desired size, which was 1 fourth inch equals a foot. And I used the wall type stacked wall exterior brick over CMU with metal stud to trace the outline of the house roughly close to the image underneath in order to capture the true size. After the floor plan was created, I added some interior appliances like the cabinets, sinks, toilet, showers, doors, and windows that corresponded to the appropriate rooms, as you can see in the pictures. So to create the roof, at first I really didn't know how to make the roof, so I just used the default roof that was in Revit. But then I realized that it did not look similar to my model at all, and it would have to be changed. So using YouTube videos, I was able to learn how to create the walls using extrusion where I then dimensioned the overhangs and slope to create the correct design for the roof. So this is a before picture and this is an after picture. And the before picture shows what the roof looked like and the slope, well the slope was correct, but the way it, the roofs joined together, it wasn't and the, <laughs> the design of it was not correct, so I had to change that. So another problem I ran into was the gable end of the walls. The geometry that was joined to the roof stopped where the exterior wall stopped and I had to edit it again and customize that wall to extend it through the opening. And using YouTube again, I was able to construct the rest of the face using the edit profile button. I also did the same for the gable end of the wall on the right side of the house. For the exterior brick wall, I really didn't like the outer CMU piece that extended along the bottom of the wall because it really took away from what my model actually looked like. And at first I tried to change the wall to a different wall with just brick, but then I realized that I could just delete the CMU part of the wall and leave the brick um, instead by clicking the edit type button using, or yeah, the edit type button was in the properties panel, so I just clicked that and it um, changed it because what was left was the brick on metal stud, and this essentially ended up being a better represent representation of my model. So to start the 3D model, I first had to cut out the floor plan, and this was given at the scale 1 fourth inch equals of 1 foot. <clears throat> I then measured the floor plan and cut out a piece of foam board to the exact size, which I then glued the floor plan onto. And after this, I made the calculations for centering the floor plan onto the 18 inch by 24 inch masonite baseboard and glued that on as well. With the floor plan finished, I then started measuring each individual wall. Well, what I really didn't like about this was that the measurements were not according to the measurements in the kit. So I had to measure them individually. And after each wall was measured, I pinned them all down in the rightful places to assure that they were the correct sizes and they would fit properly. Then I started generating ideas for the wall's exterior material. At first, I ran into some trial and error because I really thought I could replicate the brick material by coating the wall with glue and then adding some iron core to it, but it didn't work out at all because it was too grainy and it would just end up looking like a mass of red, as you can see on the picture at the bottom. And what I finally went with 
was a mixture of light mocha and white matte acrylic paint, which I would then chisel off with a utility knife to create the brick look. And after the walls were painted and chiseled, I painted the balsa wood strips white for all the door and window trims. Then I glued them on with Gorilla Wood, wood Glue. After I had painted all the walls, I set all the walls up with the pins holding them in place um, to assure again that all were there with the correct dimensions. And before I glued them down, I simulated the wall's foundation strength with craft glue and Gorilla Wood Glue. So hot glue has a tendency to puff up and it's very messy. And in the end, I found the Gorilla Wood Glue to have the most strength. So I glued them down and made sure that the walls were squared by setting the corner of one of the like bright triangles against the walls of the house and the base. And next, I moved on to the interior walls, where I then chose gray cardstock for the color and finish because um, I really like the modern look of houses and I wanted it to be like more white and gray to have that contemporary look so that's why i chose the gray because most of it was already white and i measured the interior walls and glued the cardstock onto the foam board using the craft glue so to make the window openings i traced the opening with a pencil onto the interior cardstock and the opening was then precisely cut out using a utility knife one of the mistakes I made was gluing down the cardstock before I realized that I had wanted to use plastic wrap on the interior of the windows to make it appear more realistic. So what I had to do was measure and cut out the cardstock again and then tape the plastic wrap onto the side of the cardstock, which would then be glued to the wall. And then I glued these onto the interior of the exterior brick walls. So these are the finished walls and these views um were after they were cut out and glued down to the floor plan because i was careful to glue down and square the walls this process took a very long time but i really think it was worth it at the end so to make the gable ends i first had to measure the slope of the roof by the slope that was given in the kit and then i measured the length of the sides that i had to attach a gable end to and cut out the foam board accordingly after painting and etching it with the same brick pattern I then pinned it up onto the ends of the house and then measured the top two parts of the roof and cut them out on the foam board and made sure that I incorporated the section that overlooks the back door. And to create the chimney, I had to locate the hole in the roof first by measuring the vertical and horizontal distances of that hole. And then from there, I basically uh, did the math myself and used Pythagorean's theorem to find the slope of the roof. That would be the distance from the overhang to the cut. And I performed the same methods when making the walls to construct the chimney's exterior after I had cut out the general pieces. These pieces were then glued together, and I also created a slice horizontally in the middle of the chimney to allow the roof to be taken off with part of the chimney still attached to the base. So creating the roof. To create the roof, I used a mixture of black and white paint and coated a layer of it onto sandpaper because I really wanted that um, texture of the roof instead of just having like a, a plain sheet of paper that wouldn't have that like grainy texture of, you know, like what a roof actually, like the shingles of the roof. And then I glued the sandpaper onto the foam board for the roof. And when all the gl glue was dried, I used a black permanent marker to draw shingles onto the roof so it could appear more realistic. And this took a lot of time, but it was really worth it. So at the end, I applied a ready grass vinyl mat to the base and painted sandpaper and off-white to make the sidewalk and driveway. In conclusion, although this project took a lot of time and effort, I really enjoyed it because not only was I able to define the problem of understanding the concepts of creating and designing a floor plan, but I was able to finally create something that I had always set my mind on for years. I was able to create a house using Revit software that professionals use, which was I thought was really cool. And I was able to physically replicate a floor plan, which utilized my problem solving, which was basically troubleshooting how to fix the walls, and my creativity skills, which was coming up with the ideas on material. Yeah, that is my house model project.